Hello, seventh graders. We are now in chapter 10. Yay! We've skipped a few. We are going to end up going back, but this unit really connects with the proportions and variations that we just finished. So section 10.1 is what we're looking at today, and it is solving multi-step equations. So the goal of solving an equation, it's still the same exact thing. We want to find the value of the variable. So far you've solved one and two step equations. You've had a couple of situations where there's parentheses. Now you're going to have to apply that knowledge to equations that have more than two steps. So I give you a list of steps here. I think the examples are what's going to really help us, but we can kind of go through and you'll use this as your checklist. So step number one, when you see an equation, if you see there are parentheses on either side of the equal sign, your job is to use the distributive property to get rid of them. If you don't see any parentheses, then you don't have to worry about it. After you've looked for parentheses, then look for like terms on either side of the equal sign. Remember, you can only combine like terms if they're on the same side of the equal sign together. Next, we'll add the opposite of whatever's being added to the variable term to both sides. So your next step after parentheses, after like terms, you'll kind of be left with a two-step. At that point, leave the number next to the letter, leave that alone, whatever's being added to it, add the opposite of that. And then finally, we'll multiply or divide to get that variable by itself. And you can always, always, always check in substitution to see if your answer's correct. So let's take a look at this first one. We have 2x plus 4x minus 12 equals 40. Now this should look a little different to you because we see we have two x's on the same side of that equal sign together. So I'm going to draw my line. And I'm going to take it step by step. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is keep change, change any subtraction that I see. Always, always. Okay, I do not see any parentheses. I'm sure you don't either. I do see that there are like terms on this side of the equal sign together. This negative 2x and 4x, they go together. So all I'm going to do is add their coefficients. Negative 2 plus 4, that's 2. So I have 2x plus negative 12 equals 40. Now this should look very familiar to you. It's a two-step. So I'm going to get rid of this negative 12 that's being added to the variable term. Remember, I want the variable term alone. So I'm going to add a positive 12, so it will cancel out the negative 12. 2x is left. 40 plus 12 is 52. We're almost there. I have this number in front of the x that needs to go away. This means x is being multiplied by 2, so I'm going to divide each side by 2. The 2's end up canceling each other out. Well, they, they equal 1, and that's why it works. So 1 times x is x. And then 2 goes into 52 26 times. The variable's by itself, so we know that we're right. Now, I don't think I'm going to plug in every single one, but I want to make sure you know how to check these. You can just simply type this into your calculator to check it. So, if negative 2x plus 4x plus negative 12 is supposed to equal 40, that means when x is 26, this should work. So, to check it, you would take negative 2 times that 26 that you got, plus 4 times 26, plus negative 12. When you type all that in, I'll do it. Why not? Negative 2 times 26 plus 4 times 26 plus negative 12. When I typed all that in, I got 40, and that's exactly what I was supposed to get. So I know that I'm right. You can check every single one of them. So you just plug it back in wherever you see an x. With these multi-step equations, you're probably going to see the variable more than one time. So wherever you see it, plug it in. All right, moving on to the next example here. I have 51 minus 2z minus 8z equals 23. I am going to keep change change. Always. And then I see over here I just have a 23. There's nothing I can do. But over here I do have some like terms. Remember these are negative now. So when you take negative 2z plus negative 8z, when you add two negatives, add normally, keep the sign. I'm going to put a little slash through my z so it doesn't look like a 2. So I have negative 10z plus 51 equals 23. All right, now we have a two-step. At this point, I want to get rid of this 51 that's being added to the variable term. 
So I'm going to add a negative 51. Now remember, when you're adding unlike signs, you're actually subtracting the digits and taking the sign of the greater. So those 51's are gone. Positive 51, negative 51 when you add them, cancel out. Negative 10z is left. This is what I was talking about. Positive 23, negative 51, you subtract the digits and take the sign of the greater digit. So we should end up with a negative 28. All right, I need to get this z by itself now. It's being multiplied by negative 10. I'm going to divide by a negative 10. You don't change the signs when you multiply or divide because the number divided by itself is what gives you the 1z that you need. And then when you take 28 divided by 10, no, it's not a whole number. It's a decimal, but it's okay. It's 2.8 and it's a positive 2.8 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Again, to check this, I would take 2.8 I would plug it in twice and just type that whole string of numbers in my calculator to make sure 23 comes out. Next, I know there's a fraction, but it's, it's a friendly fraction. One half, I think, is the friendliest fraction of all. We'll draw our line, change our signs, and now like terms. This time I only see the one y term, but I see a 2 and I see a negative 34. Those can definitely go together. So I'm going to write one half y. And then a negative 34 plus a positive 2 is negative 32, and we get negative 12. Same thing as before, I want my variable term alone, so I'm going to get rid of this plus negative 32 by adding a positive 32. That means on this side, I'm left with 1 half y, and on this side, negative 12 plus 32, subtract the digits, so 32 minus 12 is 20. Take the sign of the greater, so it's a positive 20. Now, there's two ways to get rid of this 1 half. You can divide each side by 1 half, because that's what y is being multiplied. Or, you can just multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 half is actually 2 over 1. But 2 over 1 is the same as 2. So over here, I'm just going to write times 2, because that means the same thing. So over here, all this cross-canceling going on, y is alone. 20 times 2, that's 40, and we're done. To type this into the calculator, I would type in 2 plus, I could either, I would probably type in 0.5 for 1 half, but you could type in 1 times 2 times 40, plus negative 34, enter, and yes, you'll get negative 12 when that happens. Okay, next one, okay, these are a little different because there are parentheses, but remember, we know how to get rid of them. So I'm going to draw the line. I see some subtraction to get rid of. And now, before you combine any like terms, you need to get rid of these parentheses. And recall, to get rid of the parentheses, you take the number on the outside and you multiply it by each term on the inside. I use the example of in class of this is Ellie and this is Ethan. And if I give Ellie four cookies, I better give Ethan four cookies. Otherwise, it's a big problem at my house. So 4 times 2x, that's 8x. Bring down your addition sign. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. Plus, we still have that 5 left equals negative 39. So right now, we just rewrote it without the parentheses. Step 2, up in our steps to solving multi-step equations, says to now combine like terms on either side. There aren't any here, but over here, I have like terms. Neither of them have a variable that makes them like terms. This 8x is good. We'll bring it down. And then negative 28 plus 5, subtract the digits. So 28 minus 5 is 23. And take the sign of the greater, so it's negative. And that equals negative 39. All those integer rules at work. Okay, we're left with a two-step now. We want to get rid of the number that's being added. It's a negative 23, so I'm going to add a positive 23. When all said and done... 8x is left over here, and now I have 39 plus negative 23. Remember, when you have two different signs, subtract the digits and take the sign of the greater. So the greater digit's negative. I'm going to put a negative with that. Almost done. All I need to do is get rid of this 8 that's being multiplied. So we divide each side by 8, and x equals negative 2. When you check this one, you can type it in just as you see. You would type in 4 and then parentheses, 2 times negative 2 plus negative 7, close your parentheses, plus 5, and hit enter. And I'm not doing it now because I know we're going to be doing a lot of practice with checking it in class, so I wanted to keep the video as short as I could. 
I'm sure you appreciate that. Okay, next one, draw our line. I see subtraction right here, so I'm going to keep change, change it. Remember, no combining like terms yet. Parentheses need to go first. So I'm going to distribute negative 2 to everything in there. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Bring down your addition. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And I still have that negative 4x and 11 set over on the other side. Okay, time for like terms. Parentheses gone, like terms. This time I see that I have a couple of x's on the same side together. Negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6x. Not a positive. Remember, when you add two negatives, it's negative. And I still have that negative 10 to add, and that equals 11. And at this point, you should be feeling home free and very thankful that you completed your skill packets with all of these two-step equations on them. We told you they were never going to go away. All right, get rid of plus negative 10 by adding 10. Negative 6x equals, when you take 11 plus 10, that's just like back in the day. It's 21. Not really much thought I had to go into that. That was a nice one. But when we're trying to divide 21 by negative 6, we might have to think about that one a little bit. Again, I didn't change the sign when I divided. You don't change the sign. When you take 21 divided by negative 6, you do get negative 3. Point five. All right, last one. So exciting. Okay, we're going to draw our line. I'm going to add the opposite here and add the opposite here. Okay, this 2w is not next to any parentheses, so I know I can just bring that down. I'm going to bring down the addition sign too. It's a negative 3 that's being distributed because we keep change changed, right? So subtracting 3 is the same thing as adding negative 3. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Now, this is kind of tricky. It's not too bad, though. I have a negative multiplied by another negative. So first off, I know it's positive. So what's 3 times w? 3w. That actually wasn't too bad, was it? OK. Now, do you remember what step is next? Yes, that's right. Combine like terms. So I have 2w and 3w. That makes 5w plus negative 18 equals negative 33. All right, time to get rid of this negative 18 that's being added. I'm going to add a positive 18. So 5w is left because those cancel out. And remember, when you are adding unlike signs, subtract the digits and take the sign of the greater digit. So I know my answer is going to be negative because 33 is greater than 18. And 33 minus 18, yes, it is 15. Okay, let's get rid of this 5. It's being multiplied, so we are going to divide by it. And we get w equals negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. All set. See you tomorrow.